Hello, this is Chuck. We are back again with another set of Nancy Drew. Last train to Blue Moon Canyon. Got this gemstones and how to identify them book to read, so let's read it. Gemstones and how to identify them by Rexford Millhouse. Gemstones include any number of crystalline rocks which, when cut, and polished can be used as jewelry. Their commercial value usually depends on how rare they are, although beauty is certainly a factor as well. Because gemstones are more often than not found by accident, it behooves miners, prospectors, and even farmers to be able to recognize them, for the earth holds many natural treasures, but only for those who know what to look for. Quartz is one of the most abundant minerals on earth. Crystalline quartz is a composite of six-sided prism which have grown together in a process called twining. Sometimes the crystals grow at right angles to each other and more frequently two crystals grow room grow from a common prism face. On several crystals grow into each other so that the corners of one penetrates the face of another. Amethyst is crystalline quartz that is lilac to deep purple in color. The deeper the color, the more valuable it is. And that's what's on the cat. I think it's the cat at the desk. Uh, citrine is a form of quartz that is rich golden color, is closely related to amethyst. amethyst. In fact, if amethyst is heated to 550 degrees centigrade, centigrade, it becomes citrine, for the heat eliminates the impurity that causes its purple coloration. Tiger's eye, which I think is what's on the base of the globe, is a fibrous type of crystalline quartz in which thin yellowish and reddish brown bands are apparent when light reflects off its polished surface. Diamond is pure carbon and is formed deep in the mantle of the earth where extreme temperatures more than 1000 degrees centigrade and extreme pressure 50,000 times greater than on Earth's surface makes its crystal extremely compact and strongly bonded, hence diamonds' well-known hardness. Due to their hardness, low-quality diamonds have many industrial uses such as for grinding wheels or drill bits, such as, you know, in a dentist drill. Magma brings diamond crystals to the Earth's surface along with other rocks from the mantle. These Kimberlite pipes often contain ol olivine, olivine per peridot, garnet, and, zir and zircon, as well as diamond. When gem hunters spot any of the indicator minerals pictured below, they would do well to search the surrounding area for diamond crystals. So, zircon, olivine, and garnet. Um, there was a green one on the, the ram head. Tourmaline comes in so many colors that it probably has at one time or another been confused with all the other stones in this book. However, tourmaline crystals are deeply and distinct distinctively straight, straight and grooved, prismatic and triangular in cross sections. The most common color is black, but some tourmaline crystals are multicolored such as watermelon tourmaline, which is pink on the, outs on the inside and green on the outside. Beryl is a very diverse mineral with several gemstones varieties. Oh, no wait, the one on the ram is probably emerald. Milky green, while its rare gems varieties are transparent, all varieties form long hexagonal prismatic crystals, which are similar to tourmaline crystals, but lack tourma tourmaline's characteristic striations. Aquamarine is the blue-green to deep blue variety of beryl. While most gemstones form relatively small crystals, aquamarine has been known to form crystals weighing more than 100 pounds, although such specimens are rare. Emerald is a deep green variety of beryl, which gets its color from trace amounts of chromium. Emerald gemstones tend to contain extraneous matter indeed, the source of a stone can sometimes be pinpointed by examining its impurities or inclusions. Garnet is a relatively common gemstone because garnets often appear in their host rocks as almost perfectly faceted crystals. They have attracted human attention for centuries. Unlike other gemstones, garnets form relatively spherical crystals that are generally reddish in color and look somewhat like pomegranate seeds. Pyrope 
Garnet's crystals are deep red. They form in the Earth's mantle and are brought to the Earth's surface in, su in much the same way as diamond's crystals. Therefore, finding pyrope increases the likelihood, but doesn't guarantee that diamond can be found in the vicinity. Peridot is the most well-known form of olivine. Its bright apple green crystals are thick and vertically striated, which with wedge-shaped terminations and an oily luster. Most peridot is found amid basaltic rocks which have been brought to the earth's surface by lava. Corandum or aluminum oxide is the is second in hardest only to diamond and as a component of the black magnetic rock known as emery has been mined and used for thousands of years as an abrasive. Its crystals are commonly six-sided and barrel-shaped with tempering ends and are when pure colorless. Rubies are one of the two gen varieties of corandum. Rubies are deep red and are and are formed from chromium substitutes for, from aluminum as corandum crystallizes, which rubies actually happen to be my uh, birthstone. Sapphires include all the other color variation variations of gem corandum, and may be pink, yellow, green, blue, or colorless depending on which transitional elements such as iron or titanium influence the crystalliza crystallization process. However, cornflower blue sapphire are by far the most sought after. Zircon, that is gemstone quality rival diamond in its beauty and brilliance, though not in hardness. Zircon crystals are typically prismatic with pure with pyramidal ends and are usually found as single specimens. They may be suspended in rock or because they are dense and durable, small grain-like crystals are often found in beach plaker deposits. Natural gemstones are usually reddish brown, but when subjected to heat, they turn yellow, colorless, or blue. Okay. So. EG is 47, but doesn't really tell us anything in terms of how to solve this puzzle. Oh, that's to reset. Okay. Well, and with that, I'm kind of at a loss of what I'm supposed to do next. Though we know, for, I know for a fact that we can turn on the steam pipes. Because I connected all the pipes together. Oh, we already did this, so... Just wanted to see, is there anything else I can interact with there? Nope. Maybe it isn't emerald. I'm trying to remember. One of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Lori Gerard has disappeared. So? Did you know she was going to disappear? Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now, my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge non stop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Look, Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a moving train. But now, if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. Okay, so this is to uh, contact the train engineer. Do you have anything to... to 
Open what's closed. Lead is the key. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. Okay. save here. I should be saving anyway, just in case. This, this thing, I gotta remember, this thing doesn't have an autosave. Um, let's see what happens if I just leave it off. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. Okay, nothing happens. Nope. There's nothing else to interact with here. Engineer. Hi. Is this Miss Gerard? No, my name's Nancy Drew. Too bad. Okay, so. Let's uh, talk to the Hardy Boys then. What have you got? See you in a bit. If you need anything, just let us know. Or not. Fine. Let's not talk to the Hardy Boys. Sandy, Sadie Crawford. An eagle. Where else have I seen an eagle? Oh my goodness. Eagle. Okay. So more questions. The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective. Do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. Do you think he's a good investigator? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is that all, dear? I should get going. My publisher thanks you. Okay. Keep like waiting to be able to at least enter one of these train cars. No rest for the wicked, I guess. Ruth Kensington, 1864. An eagle? Is there an eagle on this thing here at all? Two. Oh, there is more here. A little book of samplers. Surely there is no greater joy for the 19th century woman, young or old, than to bring a piece of linen to life with needlepoint, requir requiring only needle, thread, care, and imagination. The word sampler comes from the Latin word 
exemplum, which means example, which serves as a model. The best samplers not only allow their creators to recall what particular embroidery stitches look like when executed properly, but also demonstrate to the world their mastery of an important womanly skill. Indeed, many a gentleman's head has has been turned and many a marriage fortified by a well-crafted sampler. It is acceptable in these modern times for samplers to take many forms. One classic is the long and narrow band sampler, which features bands of flowery border designs as well as a row of numbers in the alphabet. Another classic is the spot sampler, a delightful display of a randomly placed image or motif. Example of a spot sampler. Motifs, most motifs are naturalistic objects that have specific meanings in the language of samplers. Here's a list of a common motifs and their meanings. Duck is marital fidelity. Olive peace. Eagle is America. Harp. Okay, I'm not going to read this entire thing. <laughs> Cherries departed. Okay, well, I'll see. Wis Owls of wisdom and cherries departed. Departed wisdom? Okay. Nowadays, most samplers are colorful variations on two classical style styles and are largely decorative in nature. Houses, school, and churches take center stage in some. In others, motos, verses, and important dates are featured. There is an alarming trend among some sampler makers to use only one stitch, the simple and rather plain cross stitch. It behooves these women to remember that nothing catches the eye like variety, nor holds the heart like a multi-talented seamstress. Okay, so this is obviously going to come into play later. Oh, hello. Yeah, this just got us the music sheet. I like how this doesn't set up. Despite the fact, guys, I do see there's like a microphone right by him. What's up? Damn. Well, I'll catch you later. Goodbye. Can't do anything here yet until he is done, so to speak. Okay, that's just the music notes. I don't know what the, I can't even tell what this is. Like, this is just. Do we have anything here? It's locked. Okay. So, departed wisdom. See if there, if I can talk to Tony Balducci here. What's going on? It's been great talking to you. Don't mention it. Okay. See if there's anything more I can look at. No, we just have a mixing missing pickaxe. Wonder what Jake used this for. Wonder what Jake used this for. Okay, it's really it to look at. Lead is the key. Lead is PB. Uh, is it on here? Oh, it doesn't actually show. Cause I know lead's up here on this side. Unless it's lead, but I mean, considering we're talking about a lot of minerals and uh. We got this nice handy daddy chart here. Oh, sorry, here you go. Lead's right here. 82, lead. Silver. Seeing if there's anything else I can interact with. What's to say again? No, this is just something about the dolls. 
Eliza Sandberg. So she named the doll Eliza Sandberg. That's Tiger Eye, it looks like. It's locked. Okay. And for the eagle, we need two. Interesting. Minus three. Okay, so seven. I'm assuming you only put one of each. That square in that duck looked very familiar. Okay, so we got access to the other side. Seven and then we made ten, okay. God, goodness, there's so much to look at. Okay. Apologies, Camille. Could be so upset something that befell the doll. I accidentally knocked one Camille called Naughty Tina off the shelf and literally afraid fractured its tiny skull despite my heartfelt. Okay, so there's... Can't read that because we don't have another half. Hello. Looks like to make this thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. Citrine, amethyst, zircon, those are all gemstones, I think. Thirsty nose. Okay, and this is where the... We're, so we're going to be making something. Interesting. Oh, okay. So we put it back. Then we close the drawer. And we open the second drawer. Silver. What do all those colors have to do with silver? Silver. Oh, okay. Here we go. Silver is orange, blue. Oh, we can't take this with us? Fine. I'll just write it down on a piece of paper. So, silver is orange. Blue, green, red, purple, and yellow. Anything else here? Okay, so that's the solution to that puzzle. Let's at least explore around here first. Oh, got another one of these. Awesome. Jake said a pickaxe goes here. Okay, wow, we need that pickaxe for everything. Okay, that kind of scared me. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Jake said a lamp goes here. Jake said a spyglass goes here. The hell were you making? Are you trying to communicate to the other side? This is that some sort of like that kind of deal for that. According to that diagram I found, those six gemstones are supposed to go in these six holders, but I have no idea which one goes where. Star. Interesting. Oh, I saw. Here you go. Oh, I'm sorry, what is that? I can't even tell what the hell this image is. Okay, let's not, we're gonna get, we're getting too ahead of ourselves here. We can't even do the puzzle yet. Wonder what's supposed to go here.
Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? Hmm. We keep finding all these things about dolls and stuff. Seriously? The one to find me. No offense, uh, Nadine. Nancy. Nancy. Nancy Drew. Well, as you can see, I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything. That bookshelf in the dining car, you step on this thing in the floor in there, and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. So it was just all for show? Well, not entirely. See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after like mass begging on my part, dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally, here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Uh, I think you were going to explain why you kidnapped yourself. Oh, right. Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except, I also found this. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Because you found me! See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. What about the other people you invited on this trip? If you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mine might be somewhere around there too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. Okay. How well do you know your guests? Well, I don't know you or those Harvey guys at all. Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. Whatever. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show. And I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train. And now that someone has finally found me, I can finally go meet him for real. What about Tino Balducci? I met Tino right after he got famous for solving those robberies. Inviting him here for this was a no-brainer. I mean, what an awesome detective. And those piercing eyes of his? You just know his mind's in there going 90 miles an hour. How well do you know Charlena Purcell? I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. See, what I'd really, really like to do is write romance novels. Everybody who knows me says I'd be really good at it. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlena some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. And? She hated them. Bye. I'll be waiting. <laughs> That's how we're ending the conversation. Okay, well, um, she... 
Locked, naturally. I wonder how you open it. Looks like a dance floor, maybe? Oh. Oh, nope. We're not doing that. <laughs> Don't think so. Not yet. I bet I know what this is for. <gasps> to open shit. <laughs> uh, that great. Oh my goodness. Oh, let's back away from this. Nope, don't think so. Just want to see if there's anything else. No, that's it. Okay. So, let's quickly open up. Let's uh, show the letter to the Hardy Boys at least. No, the thing is at the end here. Okay. So silver is to orange. Blue. Green. Red. Purple, yellow. Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works. Dear Jake, I have sent you two lamps which you should receive by the end of the month. When you get them, simply place carbide in the lower chamber, water in the upper chamber, then use the built in flint lighter to ignite the jet of gas which results. As you'll see, the carbide lamp is an exceedingly practical device, especially for people in your dark and dangerous line of work. Would that, would that you or I had invented it? Okay. In your last letter, you sounded quite despondent, old, old chum. I, I don't know. I can't read that with the numbering old chum. I suppose this is understandable in view of your failure to strike it rich, but I am living proof I, of how quickly misfortune can turn into good fortune. Little did I suspect five years ago that my attempt to produce aluminum would instead produce calcium carbide, or that calcium carbide, when placed in water, would release acetylene. Yet suddenly I was the surprise by but I was the surprise but happy owner of the patent for an inexpensive way of manufacturing an extremely flammable gas. First, as I became wealthy when I sold that patent, I have no doubt that you two will someday be handsomely always your friend Thomas Wilson. Handsomely rewarded for your efforts. Continue to keep me apprised of your adventures, dear friend, and never ever give up. May the lamp I sent you soon light your way to the gold you seek. Thomas Wilson. Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I'd better keep this. Yes, please keep it. Okay, awesome. So we even have that in our inventory. Interesting. Um... Checking my time. Okay. I'm going to quickly let's chat with the Hardy Boys. Founder. What is that? Okay. Maybe I was not expecting that. Uh no no, not this one. Sorry, I'm thinking. So those were the dancing lights. Hey Nancy, what's with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Yep, she's holed up in the caboose. And as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mine. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori, you got the letter with all the clues. 
Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, Joe, quit pouting. Want any help? Are you kidding? You bet I do. Now you're talking. It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. Very true. Not necessarily. Jake might not have told him the exact location. Maybe he just had him drop him off somewhere nearby. Well, still, we'd be way ahead of the game if we knew where that drop-off point was. If the engineer had any surviving relatives, we may be in luck. The guy died more than a hundred years ago. How are we supposed to find out his name? Maybe Charlena What's-Her-Face could tell us how to go about it. Good idea, Frank. I'll ask her. I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it, you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Buell? Joe, show her! Show her what? That old picture we found! Uh, okay. We found this on the bookshelf. See? Buell's supplies and pawn shop. That's gotta be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Well, that's where we're headed, so let's just hope for the best. Right. See you later. You better. Okay. Some headway happening here. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember where I saw... Okay, it wasn't here. Yes? I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. And you won. Congratulations. How would I go about finding out the name of Jake's train engineer? If you're smart, you'd ask me. And because my work is going surprisingly well, during my next break, I'll log on to my archives at home and see what I can turn up. That'd be great, thank you. Whoever invented the cellular modem, that's whom you should thank, dear. Did you know that Lori wants to be a romance novelist? <sighs> Doesn't everyone. Have you discussed any of her ideas with her? No. Could we please talk about something a little more pleasant? I'll let you get back to your writing. <laughs> let me know if you run across anything juicy. Got nothing to pleasant to talk about. Okay. Uh... Well, at least might as well inform everyone about... Lurie's, uh... Lurie's okay. Lurie's fine. Everything's cool. What's up? I found Lurie safe and sound in the caboose. So I guess those vibes you got about her being in serious trouble were wrong. Strange. My vibes are never wrong. What's even stranger is, I'm still getting them. So maybe they're not about Lori. Maybe they're about you. Me? I'm not in any trouble. Trust me. Either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. Could you be more specific? Unfortunately, no. I saw a bunch of weird glowing lights outside the window of the sleeping car. Really? Actually, I'm not surprised. You're not? They're probably some form of piezoelectricity. See, my guess is quartz crystals in the ground are being compressed as the train passes over them, and the resultant voltage, called piezoelectricity, is manifesting itself as glowing lights, probably because of some quirk in the train shape or in the composition of the metals used in its construction. It was custom built, remember. So it's a natural phenomenon, not a ghostly one? Take it from me. Old Mother Nature was capable of some pretty scary stuff. Is any of that like... Actually... That's wild, if that's I true. I won't keep you any longer. <laughs> Pleasure talking to you. Okay, uh... Vent, vent, vent. That tool I saw in the yes. caboose. I bet that's what you use to unscrew these bolts. I, I got Nancy. I'm on it. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on. 
Okay, this is the one's individual, so I can leave this one to last. That interferes with that one. That I don't need to touch. This is also individual. No, no. That hits the one on the side there. Oh. I think that's it. More pipes to connect. Okay, so it turns out I was hadn't connected all the pipes. Uh and with that I actually need to end the set here. So thank you for liking if you like. Thank you for commenting if you commented. Thank you for subscribing if you subscribe. Thank you for favoriting if you favorited. And thank you for simply clicking on this video. Until next time guys, see ya!